My name is Eric Dorf. I am an orthopedic surgeon with Vail Summit Orthopedics. My specialty is upper extremity surgery, in particular hand, elbow, and shoulder. Today we're going to talk a little bit about rotator cuff pathology, rotator cuff surgery, uh, the patients that I see that have got rotator cuff tears, and uh, what we do uh, in order to treat this very common condition. The rotator cuff is made up of four muscles. It's a cuff of four muscles and tendons that then rotate the shoulder. There are two muscles in the back, the infraspinatus muscle and the teres minor muscle. They become tendons that insert on the humerus, sort of on the back of the shoulder. There's one large muscle on the top of the shoulder here called the supraspinatus. That's the most commonly injured muscle of the rotator cuff. It inserts more on the top of the shoulder. And then there's one large muscle in the front of the shoulder called the subscapularis. You can see here it's muscle belly, and then it becomes a tendon and inserts on the front of the humerus. The muscle in the front, the subscapularis, internally rotates the shoulder. The muscle on the top, the supraspinatus, brings the shoulder out like this. The two muscles in the back are responsible for elevating the shoulder and externally rotating the shoulder. The most common reason that people tear their rotator cuff is primarily overuse injuries. People in the mountains maintain a very high level and very active lifestyle late into their athletic careers. As their athletic career starts to wind down a little bit more, they tend to not want to wind down their mental attitude, which I really appreciate. I love having patients who push it well into their 60s and 70s. The problem is that you just can't repair yourself the way that you used to. My patients very frequently come to me with, with complaints of shoulder pain. That can be a very nonspecific complaint, meaning we don't really know what the, the etiology of those symptoms are when someone comes in and says they've got shoulder pain. My job as an orthopedic surgeon is to narrow it down. I try to find out, do you, is this arthritis that's causing somebody's pain? Is this a bursitis in the shoulder or inflammation in the shoulder that's causing their pain? Or does this person indeed have a rotator cuff tear? There are a number of specific tests that I can do in the office to evaluate the rotator cuff. The primary one that I use is a physical examination. I test the strength of the rotator cuff in multiple planes, meaning I ask people to lift their arm up to their side, lift their arm up to the front, externally rotate, internally rotate. Do these motions cause pain? Is there weakness associated with them? Is there a reason that I would think, hey, we need to take another step to further evaluate this rotator cuff? The first step we do is get an x-rays of their shoulder. Oftentimes, the same people that have rotator cuff tears may also have arthritis, or at least the same age group has arthritis. So we get x-rays of the shoulder to make sure that they we're not dealing with an arthritic problem or a degenerative joint problem rather than just simply a tear of the rotator cuff. The next step after x-rays, assuming the x-rays look okay, or if I have a high clinical suspicion for an, a tear, would be to get an MRI of the shoulder. MRI is a very sensitive test that helps us to look more specifically at the soft tissues around the shoulder and helps us to evaluate the integrity of the rotator cuff all the way from its origin on the scapula to its insertion out on the humeral head. This is an example of an MRI of a patient of mine with a large rotator cuff tear. A 65-year-old gentleman who was lifting his skis out of the gondola presented to me with pain and weakness in his shoulder. We obtained an MRI, which very clearly demonstrates a rotator cuff tear. Now, a rotator cuff on the MRI, the muscle looks like this, the tendon is nice and black, and you should see that tendon go out and insert all the way out onto the humeral head, which is right here. What you can see here is the, here's, the ten, here's the muscle, here's the tendon, and you can see this big gap of fluid. And that's an indication that he's got a very large tear of the rotator cuff. The tendon is not making it out to there, and that explains this patient's weakness. Oftentimes when my patients come to me, they ask me, how are you going to repair the rotator cuff? Well, again, I think this is relatively straightforward, and I like to explain the process to my patients. If this is the rotator cuff, where it's been torn off of the bone, this being the bone, here being the cuff, we simply use an anchor. This is a suture anchor. What this is essentially is a small piece of plastic with sutures attached to them. This anchor gets driven down into the bone here. The sutures then come out of the bone. We use another special instrument such as this to pass those sutures through the rotator cuff, bring them out through the top of the rotator cuff, and then all arthroscopically, we're able to tie those sutures down to the bone, and you end up with a pair that looks a lot like this. So what we're looking at now are images from the operating room for the same patient and his rotator cuff tear. You can see the edge of the rotator cuff as it's been pulled off of the bone. You can see the area here where the rotator cuff should have inserted 
We call this the footprint of the rotator cuff. This image that we're looking at now is a final image of the rotator cuff once it's been repaired. You can see now that the tendon is opposed down to the bone and it's in a position where it can heal and the patient can regain function. After surgical repair of the rotator cuff has been completed, the next most important step is physical therapy. Physical therapy for after repair of the rotator cuff is extremely important and I have a long discussion with my patients before surgery about the importance of their continued and diligent physical therapy protocol. Rotator cuff surgery is outpatient surgery. This is a surgery that we do in one of the outpatient surgery settings, meaning the patients go home the same day. We call patients the day after surgery to make sure that they're doing okay. 99% of the time, that's the case. I then typically see my patients back in my clinic at two weeks for a wound check, and then I see them again at one month. At that two week visit, we oftentimes begin some very gentle scapular wrist, hand, elbow range of motion exercises, and at one month, we see them again and begin a, a formal physical therapy protocol at that time. Final follow-up for a rotator cuff surgery includes office visits with me at two months out from surgery, three months out from surgery, and then typically again at six months out for sur from surgery where hopefully we're telling patients that they can just go back to all their normal activities.